Happy Friday morning, everybody! Did I scare you? I feel like I came in a little bit hot there. Hello! How you doing? Good to see you all in the chat. I'm Kathleen. If you haven't joined us previously, let me introduce myself real quick. I'm your host for these daily creative challenges, and I'm also a designer here at Adobe, so I'm super excited to be joining you. If you're in the chat, say what's up. We've got Andy, Wade, what's up? Adam, Gerard. Somebody is saying that this is the best moment of their life, and I... I'm so glad to hear that. That's really nice to hear on a Friday morning at work. Really cool. Tim, I'm sorry, did I scare you? Super cool, came in real hot. Sorry about that. Uh, welcome everyone, this is day four of our Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with our Level Up theme going strong. We are gonna be designing a really cool kind of social media banner today for our fictional video games. So I'm gonna be basing that uh, theme around what I'm gonna be working on today and hopefully you're gonna work with me. Somebody says I love your t-shirt and Susanna, I thought I needed a little extra power today and this is my power bear. He gives me all the power that I need and more. So I really like him and actually I was kind of inspired by this design for uh, a piece of the design that I'm gonna show you when we jump into Photoshop. So stick tight. <laughs> Can we see the design of your shirt? Sure, Roman. It's my cool lightning bear and on the back it says something. I think it says like American Thunder. American Thunder. That's a great band name of some sort. I know I can wear it backwards, forwards. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. I could talk about this all day, but we only have 23 minutes. So let's jump into this. If you are new to the Daily Creative Challenge, you can learn more about it by going to behance.net slash daily creative challenge. You can register all the good things and see all of the steps on how you can participate in the challenge. This is where we're gonna find all of our challenges every day. Uh, we have day one through four unlocked so far and you can also watch the replays here super easily. So if you missed previous days, go back and watch, see what we got up to. And today we're gonna be working on compositing. So it says create a dreamscape inspired by space to be applied to a header image on a social media channel, focus on combined imagery and composition. Cool. So we are gonna be working with compositing today and I've noticed in a lot of your submissions already, you already are pretty great at compositing. So I'm excited to see how you push this to the next level today. For you out there who have never heard of a composite or a digital collage, I'll go over the basics really easily, but they're found very often in like movie posters, a lot of video game stuff, a lot of images are composited together to create a new world out of found imagery. What's up, Maria? Hey, Lee, good to see you. Steven, hi. All right, so let us jump into Photoshop, but before that, I wanna remind you all that you can come join us on Discord. It's an awesome place to share your work before you post it on Behance. You can post your work to get feedback, you can give feedback and level up that way. So come join us there, it's bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S. Okay. Let's get into Photoshop, shall we? I'm gonna delete that real quick. So here is my composite, but it is not composited yet. I have all of my layers put together in the order that I want, but this looks kind of like I just have photographs and they're stuck on top of each other. We need to finesse this a little bit uh, and get it to look slightly realistic, but it can still look like a dreamscape. Good morning, Erika. Claire Louise, hello, Maria. So first I wanna kinda of explain what the difference between a digital collage and a composite might be if you wanna make the distinction. A digital collage often is very obvious that it is different images stacked on top of each other. They can be very graphic. I actually have an example on my Behance I can show you. My good old profile. So this is a digital collage. It's pretty obvious that these are just images that have been cut out and placed together to create something new and it's often used in graphic design or fine art. And then compositing is what you would find where say you have a creature head and the human body and it actually looks realistic. So I'll show you an example of that that we worked on last challenge. So here's a digital collage. Then here it might be a composite. So everything works together seamlessly. It looks convincing, but it's a little otherworldly. It's pretty cool. So we're gonna be going for this otherworldly feel today. I'm gonna to be really focusing on different ways that you can select images, cut them, um, mask them to be realistic. Hey Sam, 
Hey, Ashi, good to see you. And the first thing I'm gonna start with is just showing you how to use your marquee tools to select simple shapes. So I have my Mars layer right here. It's on top of a star field. So my star field is in the background. Mars layer is right here. And you'll notice that it has a white shape around it. We don't want that. I could get rid of it by just changing the blending mode, but let's do, do it uh, the way that's gonna help us out in the future. By selecting our elliptical marquee tool, you can just tap M to get to that hotkey, but I'm just gonna select it right here. And I actually learned this last challenge from Chad, so thank you, Chad, for giving me this tip. But if you click and drag, you'll notice that I can skew it. I want it to be a perfect sphere. So I'm gonna hold Shift to constrain it, but then I wanna be able to move my selection on top of the planet, so I'm gonna hold uh, the space bar at the same time as well. So I'm holding shift, space, and I'm dragging around with my mouse. If I let go of the space bar, I can increase the size. There we go. So that'll work for me. Now all we're gonna do to get rid of this white background is we're gonna click our layer mask icon down in our layers panel. Remember we used it in previous days. It's this little guy over here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Cool, we have Mars, it's in the sky, and it looks relatively realistic. All right, let's turn on our next layer. Now, this is a, it's a newish tool that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using the Select Subject and Select and Mask tools up here in our um, Quick Selection menu. So if you go over here, you'll notice that the hot tool, or the hot key is W, and that'll get you Magic Wand or Quick Selection tool. And when I use either of these tools, these icons at the top will pick up, or will show up. It's select subject and select and mask. So if I click select subject with my mountain layer selected, it's thinking, it's thinking, cool. You'll notice that it kind of uses some smart technology to kind of try to figure out what the subject of this image is. It's done an okay job of selecting the mountains, but I'm just gonna go into here with my quick selection tool and I'm gonna continue selecting. So I'm just clicking, I'm dragging, it's using more smart technology to kind of figure out what I wanna select. And you need to make sure that this icon is selected up here. It's when you click, you're gonna be adding to the selection. Cool, so I have my mountain selected, perfect. I'm just gonna layer mask that one more again. I like that. And I notice that there is kind of a little bit of a ridge of light coming over the edge, and that's just because the selection wasn't super clean. But I actually like this. It almost looks like there's a light source behind that we can't see that's just barely peeking over. <laughs> Lisa says, this challenge sounds like I'm gonna get lost in it. You might get lost in space. But these techniques are really simple. It's just cutting images out, putting them on top of each other. And then I'll show you how to combine the colors so that they look like they fit in the same world. Welcome Fiorina. Chad, hello, you got this. All right, let's turn on our mid-mountain layer. Now I wanna get rid of the sky and I wanna keep the mountains. By the way, these are infrared photographs and I think they're perfect for a planet, a planetscape, it's pretty cool. Lucas, yes, you could totally use the pen tool if you wanna make uh, some selections that way. I'm just gonna use quick selection because I think this is gonna be pretty simple. So I have quick selection still selected. You'll see there's magic wand, quick selection. Let's keep this one selected. And I'm just gonna click and kind of drag through here. Does a pretty good job of designating the sky from the mountains. Let's layer mask it. Okay, our landscape is coming towards us. It's getting really strong. Ooh, Siobhan, you like the color matching? Yes. I do too. It's really nice. You can find images and landscapes of all sorts and then just use maybe a hue saturation layer or a color balance layer to match the colors to each other. Luckily, these already matched pretty well. They had that magenta infrared feel to them. What's up, Cesar? Illustrator can do this, right? So Illustrator could totally create a clipping mask for you, but I would recommend doing these kind of um, kind of finessed selections, especially of photographs in Photoshop. Especially because we're gonna be adding some, um, I guess, photo effects on top of it. Alrighty, 
Uh, Adrian, so we don't need to go into Select and Mask, just click the Mask button in the layers. Cool. Yeah, Adrian, so Select and Mask will give you way more options, and I'm actually gonna show you how to use it uh, here. You could just make a layer mask, but Select and Mask will help you make selections. So let me show you. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. We have our protagonist here. This is our main character of our game. What's she doing up there? Who knows? And I have the layer selected, and I'm gonna click Select Subject. So hopefully, this is gonna select our subject. Cool, it does a pretty good job of just selecting her. But if I zoom in, I notice that maybe it's not totally perfect around her hair. And also, I wanna also capture some of this ground beneath her feet to add another layer of depth. So let's jump into Select and Mask. All right. We can see our selection there. This is a very cool, newish uh, tool in Photoshop. I think it was released last year, I believe. And like I said, this gives you many more ways to finesse your masks and selections with sliders and uh, quick tools. So in the view mode, you'll notice that I have overlay selected. You can choose other kinds of view modes. This is really just how you prefer to work while you are masking. I could just work looking at the marching ants. I could put it on black, that's also helpful. Just black and white if you're getting really, really crisp with it. But I like to do this because the red adds a layer between uh, the actual image and what I'm working on so that I can really see what I'm doing. So let me maybe shift the edge inward just a bit. <laughs> I'm moving all over the screen, whoa because I noticed that there uh, is a little bit of blue still showing up up here. You can increase the contrast if you would like, and you can see how that works. As I increase it, not much changes. I could feather. Since she is a human, she is not naturally feathered, so I am not going to be including any of that. Or I could smooth it. So you'll notice like at her shoulders, the selection comes in a little bit at her feet. So those aren't super helpful when you're trying to select an entire human form. But when you're trying to select things like hair or clothing or uh, plants in the background, it can be really helpful. All right, so here's what I'm gonna use uh, the Select and Mask tool for. I am going to jump into my lasso tool. I'm gonna make sure that it is combining the shapes. I'm going to draw kind of an organic shape in here. Make a selection. Awesome, and it shows me the preview right there <laughs> without having to uh, confirm any changes. So let's make another selection so that the space between her legs is also all ground. Finesse it a little bit more. Cool, I think that looks pretty good. What do we think? Oh, Dennis, thanks, nice motivator. That's my job. Lisa, can you zoom in a bit? Yeah, Lisa, what would you like me to zoom in on? My selections, perhaps? So you'll notice that I just used my lasso tool. You could also use the polygonal lasso tool if I wanted to make things a little more rocky, but I liked it how it was. So I'm gonna go back with my lasso tool. I'm going to be deleting from my shape. And there we go. Whoops. Look at me, messing up my own selection. Then we're gonna grab her dress one more time. Cool, looks good. Ashi, I'm glad that you're finding it interesting. There are so many different ways to select things in Photoshop and mask things. Um, it's really just what works for the actual technique that you're looking for and what you prefer to do. So let's go ahead and layer mask our new selection. Ta-da! She looks like she lives on this new infrared planet. Now I could just call it done here, but I wanna add a little more detail to kind of connect the entire image together. Oh, thanks Catherine, it says looks great and so quick. It's really easy, once you get selections down, you can just play, push and pull the layers in front and behind each other. Let's try that real quick actually. Like she could be hiding, who knows? It's easy to just play quickly. Okay, so let's add our elements that are gonna combine the whole image together. And the way that I wanna do this is I wanna add a ring around Mars, because it's not Mars anymore, it's a new planet called, I don't know, you name it, <laughs> an orange planet with a ring around it. Maybe Jupiter, Saturn. 
Uh, and then let's add also a ring around her head to make her a little more ethereal. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go down to our ellipse tool down here. If you don't see ellipse, you can long press on this. You might see rectangle and you can always just scroll on down to ellipse. And I'm gonna, before I even drag anything out, I'm gonna make sure my fill is nothing. This is kind of like Illustrator. So fill, nothing. My stroke is this nice aqua blue and it's around two pixels. Awesome. Now when I click and drag, it's gonna make a new shape layer for me. See, it made an ellipse down here, perfect. And I am just going to go to Effects, Outer Glow, like we did yesterday with the Level Up logo. Moving again so fast, you can't even see me. And then let's check this out. So our blend mode can be normal. We can play with these sliders as we see fit, but I want the glow to be pretty subtle. Maybe even a little bit smaller. Cool, that works. We'll press OK. And then we're also going to make sure that we are combining our shapes so it doesn't make a new layer. And I'm just gonna create a little shape behind her head. Cool, she's ethereal, she's awesome. Now let's get rid of this ring in front of the planet so it looks like it travels all the way around. It's super easy to do, let's create a layer mask. We're masking all over the place today. And the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool. I'm gonna make a rough selection around the ring that will be going behind the planet. I'm just gonna switch to my brush tool and I'm just gonna click and draw. And the reason that I make the selection, I could have just done that without the selection, but you might start to interfere with the ring in front. So I just like to be super careful to make our selection boom, boom, boom and then draw. You could fill it with black if you'd like, but this is the way I'm gonna handle it today. Okay, this looks pretty cool. Now, it's still a little bit obvious to me that all of these images are from different locations. It looks pretty good, but one way that is super quick that will kind of mesh all of your uh, layers together is adding a doo -doo -doo -doo, color lookup layer. So this is down in your adjustment layers, color lookup. And this will open a new menu in your properties panel. And this is where you can just play with different um, kind of filters, I guess you would say. They're supposed to emulate different uh, camera styles, different film styles. So you can just play with these. And when you put this kind of filter on top of everything, it really meshes everything together and makes it look like it all exists within the same atmosphere. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, totally, Adelson. Thank you, thanks for uh, putting alternative workflows in the chat, that's always really helpful. So what do we think? What are we looking for? I noticed that it feels very warm in the image, very red, so maybe kind of playing off of that, maybe this will give it a little bit of a vintage feel. So I chose Kodak 521.8. I think that's just kind of a camera uh, style or a film style, I should say. And that fades it a little bit, it's a little bit retro. Yeah, I know, good old color lookup. Got him with the good old color lookup. And then from here, you can increase opacity, decrease it. You can even change the blending modes like we've talked about previously. Your options are truly limitless in Photoshop. Okay, so I should mention that the dimensions of this image are 1500 wide and 500 tall, and that is perfect for like a Twitter banner. Um, so if we wanted to make this the Twitter banner for our Level Up game, we might place our Level Up logo right in the center, right in an area that will be very visible in the banner. And I did that by choosing my Level Up logo, bringing it in and just changing the mode to screen because as you remember, it was on a black background, but screen is gonna drop out all of those dark values and just leave the light. Cool, and you could even drop the logo below the color lookup in the layers to have it mesh with the colors a little bit better. 
What do we think? Do we like? I think this is pretty cool. I'm so curious about this protagonist. What is she doing up there in that simple white dress? I bet she's cold or hot. I don't know how it is up there. <laughs> Oh, Mark, so he says, Kodak 5218 is color negative film, tungsten balanced. Okay, so that's why I kind of gave it that cooler shift to it. Very interesting. So let's get this exported. I would say that is good to go. And I don't think Behance needs a 1500 pixel wide image on the project, so let's bump that down to maybe a thousand. See how that goes. Let's export it, day four. Finished. It's always scary to say finished in your file names. It's almost like a, it's a curse. All right, let's jump back into our profiles. Again, Huxel, thank you for the cover image. It's amazing. I'm just gonna edit my project. Let's click this cog, click edit, get a sip of coffee. Yeah, Fiorina, I hope she has atmosphere too, or some way to breathe up there. <laughs> okay, so day three, we have our level up video game logo. Let's add day four. Where are we? Let's navigate. Zoom. There we are. Finish. It looks good, but the lighting is a bit off. Santosh, if you can give me some tips on how you would change the lighting, I would super appreciate that. Maybe adding some gradients to each layer that would kind of make it obvious where the lighting is coming from. Because I imagine that the, the color or the the light source is in front of her because she has that bright light on her face. So maybe the the planet here needs kind of a radial gradient. Let me know what you think. Okay, let's say day five social media banner composite. We're gonna save it and before we do that, let's make sure our settings have PS daily challenge in our discoverability keywords. PS daily challenge, there it is. You don't need to check that every time, it's gonna stay the same, but if you're just making your project for the first time, make sure you put that keyword in there so that we can search for your work when you post it. All right, let's check it out, let's see how it looks. Ah, Tiwa, thanks. Medline, hi, good to see you. All right, there it is, that fits well within there. The logo looks pretty good in there, I think. So with the couple minutes we have left, let's look at some of your submissions from yesterday. I'm just gonna refresh, make sure I haven't missed anything. So like I said, you can search in Behance by just searching PS Daily Challenge and then making sure that most recent is selected. So we can see the most recent projects. This is really cool from Nicholas. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. A lot of these are submissions from yesterday's Level Up Challenge where we learned about making effects with text. So specifically we learned about making a glitch effect, kind of a warped effect, but you could have done whatever you wanted with this. I've seen a lot of these on Discord as well, so it's cool to see them out in the wild. <laughs> Catherine, Planet Illiscath. It's a good planet. All about Photoshop, awesome. So Nicholas chose uh, his own title for the video game, Game Over, but used the techniques, and I see you use that little distort warp down here. It really gives it a nice shape too, especially in this E and this O. Nicely done, appreciated. And I think Malini posted this perhaps on Discord asking if it was okay if they used a different effect, so like they focused on a neon text effect, and yeah, totally, use whatever effect you would like. This looks really realistic. Check it out, it's even on a brick wall. Has a nice drop shadow. Malini, I would be super interested to hear and see how you achieved this. Maybe you could post some process in here as well. Looks really believable. Nice job, Malini. Ooh, cool, Zuzana kind of combined the neon and the glitch effect, awesome to see. Love that, and Zuzana's been posting previous projects as well. I would recommend that you include all of your projects in one, or all of your day challenges in one project, just so you can have some consistency and some meat to the bones. You know, when you just post a single image, um, 
it can feel a little empty sometimes, but if you have all of these submissions following a single theme, it would make a really nice single portfolio piece. Frederick, hello. All right, Mark. Cool, so this is the glitchy text effect. Decided to make a bilingual version using the phrase, that one, climb steadily. I love that. The glitch effect on these characters is really interesting. Honestly, I don't think you even need these green shapes. I think this kind of orange and lime green, yellow and purple color palette is perfect just how it is. Nice job. Also, you're in Redwood City. Hello, neighbor. Very cool. And this is a really nicely laid out challenge. In progress, cool. Wow, I'm gonna appreciate this and make sure that I come back and look at it more as you um, update it more. This is awesome. Really beautiful postcard from Ashley using blending modes. Nice job, the text is laid out pretty well and fits within this triangle, so good job. Game night, level up. Ooh, you even put this, the lines throughout the entire thing. That really looks like an old kind of monitor. All right, everybody, super awesome to see your work. I'm gonna be checking it out more as the day goes by. So make sure you're hanging out in Discord if you would like to get feedback on your work before you post it. It is the weekend now, so you have the weekend to catch up on your work if you would like to. And then on Monday morning, I will be back again at 8.30 with another challenge. So make sure you come back for that. Can't wait to see you all then. And we have Better Know a Brush coming up after this. So Paul and Renee are gonna be working through some uh, workflows using brushes. Paul is a professional matte painter and illustrator and artist, has worked on pretty much every Pixar film that has ever existed. So make sure you stick around for that. It's gonna be a really cool intro to digital painting. All right, everyone, see you soon. Bye.